Hi, welcome back. Let us continue our lesson on free structure grammar. In the previous lesson, we talked about constituents and then we looked at the two major ways of representing constituency in free structure grammar. That is using trees and using the bracketed diagram. We learned that for the bracketed diagram, it is very difficult to read. We are sticking with using the tree method to represent constituency in free structure grammar. Let us talk about the general rule schema. This is the general rule governing all the other rules of free structure. It is extremely important to understand the general rule in order to be able to interpret all the subsequent rules that we are going to talk about. What is the general rule schema of free structure? This is the general rule schema. XP consists of X, Y and Z. Are you confused? Don't be. What is the meaning of this rule? XP over here can stand for any phrase. This is a variable. It can stand for any phrase. So XP means X phrase, where X can stand for any phrase in English. What are the phrases that you know in English? First of all, the XP can stand for a noun phrase. The XP can stand for a verb phrase. XP can stand for an adverb phrase. The XP can stand for a prepositional phrase. And the XP can stand for the adjective phrase. X over here is just a variable. And this variable represents the phrases that we have in English. So in the general rule schema, XP can stand for any phrase at all. It means that when we are writing the rules for the phrases, you will see that we will write noun phrase and then we will bring this sign to see the constituents of the noun phrase. That is the meaning of XP. It stands for any phrase in English. If XP stands for any phrase in English, what about the arrow? The arrow here means consists of. It means this particular phrase consists of. So if you hear consists of, then it means that everything that comes to the right will be constituents of the major phrase. That is why the arrow is called consists of. All these that you see here are constituents of the X phrase. This means that X is a constituent of XP. Y is also a constituent of XP. Z is also a constituent of XP. So it means that the XP consists of X, Y and Z. Where X, Y and Z stand for the constituents within this particular phrase. This is the general rule schema that we are going to use. So in our subsequent videos, you would see that we will write NP. Then we bring an arrow and then write things like this. If you see it, that is the meaning. It means that the phrase that is now phrase consists of these constituents. That is the meaning of this general rule schema. Instead of using this rule where X, Y and Z are written together without any signs in between them, we can also represent the rule whereby we bring the addition sign between the constituents of the phrase. So if we have an X phrase that consists of these constituents, we can use the plus sign to show that these constituents are joined together to form the larger constituents. If we use plus to write our rules, then it means we are expressing concatenation of the 
elements. So in grammar, when we say concatenation, it means joining together constituents in a linear way, like this. Therefore, we can either write the rules for a noun phrase whereby the constituents are not joined together by any addition sign, or we can write the rule for a particular phrase where the constituents are joined by an addition sign, which shows that the elements are joined in a linear sequence, concatenation. This is an example of what we are talking about. We have used the noun phrase as an example. If this is a rule of a noun phrase, then this is how you should read it. The noun phrase consists of, D here stands for a determiner. So the noun phrase consists of a determiner and a noun. The brackets that you see here means that the determiner is optional. It can be removed. That is how to read the phrase structure rules. This is also another way of writing the same rule. You can write the rules by using the concatenation or the plus sign between the constituents. Or we can write the rule without using any plus sign between the constituents. Both of these noun phrases have the same rule, just that in the second one, we didn't use the plus sign. Both of them are accepted and they are the same thing. Again, another example is this rule for the verb phrase. If you look at this verb phrase, it consists of an adverb phrase which can be more than one. That is why you see the plus sign over here. So it means that this verb phrase consists of more than one adjective phrase, but it is optional because we have put it in brackets. Whenever you see that we have put a constituent in brackets, it means that that constituent is optional. This verb phrase consists of an optional adverb phrase plus a verb that is the head and then an optional adverb phrase which can be more than one adverb phrase that is how to read phrase structure rules so when we are when we are writing rules for noun phrases verb phrases adverb phrases prepositional phrases or adjective phrases that is how you should read the rules this noun phrase consists of an optional determiner and a noun. That is how you should read phrase structure rules. The constituents of this verb phrase were joined together using the addition sign, concatenation. But we can omit the addition signs over here. If we remove them, we will still have the same rule. It doesn't change anything. It is based on preference, what works for you. So if we remove all those addition signs, we are going to have the same rule over here. Just that in this one, there is no addition signs in between to show concatenation of the constituents. This is the general rule schema and how to read the free structure rules. In the next lesson, we are going to talk about the rules for the noun phrase. Stick with us.